Good Sunday morning, everybody, live and direct from downtown Memphis, Tennessee. I'm meteorologist Austin Onik. A quiet morning, a little bit of drizzle across the Mid-South, and that's really about all we've got for right now. A little bit of patchy fog reported across portions of the area, but beyond that, things are, again, decently quiet. You are going to need the windshield wipers yet again as we go into the rest of the weekend. We'll talk more about that coming up here in just a little bit. If you're just joining us, just waking up, or maybe just getting back home from last night, Again, not too bad overnight, but some fog and some drizzle, and that's about as much as we've got for right now. If you've never joined us before, thanks a lot for stopping by and keeping an eye on the weather with News Channel 3 and the weather experts, and more details to follow on your complete forecast coming up here in just a little bit. If you've never tuned in here before, forecast in the blue bar at the bottom of the screen, and again, you can catch the entire forecast plus a lot more at wreg.com slash weather. So thanks a lot again for everybody for getting up and joining us for this morning. Seven-day forecast also available available here as well, and you can catch me on all these social media networks and a whole bunch more. Still trying to figure out Snapchat. I'll get there eventually, I promise. I'm not entirely too old to understand that, but we'll get there eventually, I'm pretty sure. Drop your locations and your current weather reports, if you have them, into the comments section. Let's see what the temperatures are, the sky conditions, wind speed, wind direction, if you got any rainfall overnight out that direction. If you've got pictures, let's include those too. We'll show you where to send them coming up here in just a little bit, so stay tuned for more on that. Rest of the area, again, through the rest of the day today, we're going to be seeing, again, the possibility of a few scattered showers, but really not much more than that, at least for right now. But into tonight, that could be a different story, so stick around for more on that in just a little while. Temperatures remain very mild across the area throughout the rest of the morning and into later on this afternoon. Temperatures will be well above normal. Normal for this time of the year is about where we are as we record. Let me see if I'm pointing the right way. Right about now, we're back in the upper 40s to lower to mid 50s. That's our normal high temperature for this time of the year. We're going to be several steps above that into the rest of the day. Matter of fact, some of you south of the metro area and I-40 might make your way fairly close to 70 degrees today. So hope you like variety in your forecast because you're definitely getting that over the last week or so. More chances of thunderstorms as we go into this evening. We'll talk more about that coming up in just a little bit. We've got an updated forecast from the Storm Prediction Center, which you definitely want to stay tuned for, so stick around for more on that. See, cloudy and 54 degrees. Sharon A. Crowell from Gosnell, Arkansas. Welcome to the show, and thanks for the weather report this morning. 52 degrees in Medina. Hope I'm saying that right. Tennessee should have that down by now. I've been here for 20 years. I should know better than that by now. Liz Royer, welcome from Cooper Young. Crystal Cackler from Lakeland. Thanks for uh, tuning in for this morning. Anthony Richards, spring is around the corner. Yeah, about 45, 50 more days, somewhere in there. But uh, yeah, we're getting there eventually, so we'll get there at some point in time. Latasia King, Holly Springs, welcome to the show. Horn Lake from Yvonne Tyson Horton. And looking again from uh, let's see Dyersburg, Katie Slaughter, Rutenberg, hope I'm saying that right. Thanks a lot for joining us. Weather is crazy. Crystal Cackler, well, you know, a little variety is not too bad either. Taking a look around the area of Great Smoky Mountains National Park, did have, well, we did have, there we go, a little fog back in the valleys there. Not really too much green on the trees just yet in western North Carolina. Likewise, again, pretty gray around Heidelberg Elementary in Clarksdale, Mississippi this morning. Back into the area of Clark Towers, Poplar and Mendenhall, Poplar Pike, and Germantown Parkway. Not seeing a lot of traffic this morning just north of Germantown High School. Lots of clouds out there, but nothing showing up this morning in the way of rain in the rain gauge. Got zero when it comes to rain into the overnight period of time, so not much happening, but very mild. Temperatures in the mid to upper 50s already across much of the area there. And again, across much of downtown, thin strip of sunlight just between the overcast and the horizon. Downtown Memphis looking at the Peabody Hotel, the Duck Palace, and the Duckies about ready to get their walk going in about another three hours or so. Going to be a little windy up on top of the roof, so hopefully they've accounted for the wind resistance as they head back to the elevator. And good luck to the Duck Master by navigating all those very stiff cross breezes up there as we go into the rest of the day. 46 in Velosta GG. I'm assuming that's Georgia, possibly, from Margaret Willoughby. Thank you very much for that. And for everybody else who's checking in for this morning, uh, Derek Brassel Sr., waiting on Groundhog Day. You can do the waiting. I don't do any waiting on the furry faux forecaster, but that's just me. If you like the holiday, that's entirely up to you, so congratulations on that. 
No personal feelings about that whatsoever here at all. Thank you very much. Uh, transmitter tower cam. Where was I after ranting on the ground groundhog? I-40 and Witten Road. Again, so far traffic is light for Sunday morning and moving along pretty well at this time. And likewise around South Haven, back to around I-55 and Goodman Road. And right about there, that's where I was with photographer extraordinaire Howard Hodo earlier this week when those storms were passing on through. Nice place to view the interstate, but a terrible place when it comes for getting any hot coffee, unfortunately, during the middle of a snowstorm. But a lot better here, looking off toward Horn Lake in the distance. Storm Tracker 3S, a little bit of activity going on into the Mid-South area. Most of the light scattered showers have crossed over the Mid-South and are now moving into around the Tennessee River, it's Middle Tennessee, Northwest Alabama, Northeast Mississippi, and all that continues back over to the east. Back to the west of the Mid-South area into around Central Arkansas, we do have a little bit more in the way of scattered showers developing just to the west of the News Channel 3 tier of counties here are Phillips, Lee, St. Francis, Poinsett, and Cross counties. Again, not much happening here, but we do have more scattered showers on the way and even more activity developing down to our south. It's not much, but we are seeing again developing areas of showers in advance of this next storm system. Now, most of the energy of this system is going to be passing us well to the north, and that's really good news for us because it's going to be taking a good chunk of the energy and moving it away from us. There's going to be enough energy to get thunderstorms going. There's not going to be enough energy to get a huge amount of severe weather taking place, and that's really good news. Now, the other thing is a lot of cold air mixing in with the system. So if you or anybody you know are traveling anywhere between, say, Minneapolis, St. Paul, the Great Lakes, Wisconsin, and Denver, over 130 flights have already been canceled at Denver International. So if you're planning on traveling anywhere through the Midwest, could be dangerous from the panhandles all the way up to the Great Lakes. Blizzard warnings, winter storm warnings, ice and snow possible from the Rockies through the plains up into the upper Mississippi Valley. So this could be a bit of a problem. Is any of this in effect for us? No. So why the heck am I telling you about it? Because we are the station that is on your side and we want you to be aware of what may be heading our direction. And this, where winter weather, is not. So one less thing to worry about at this point as we go throughout the rest of the morning. So good news for us. Way above freezing on temperatures. We're back into the mid to upper 50s for this morning. And winds a little breezy out of the southeast to the southwest, so we're just not seeing too much of anything else out there in the way of very chilly weather at this time. Maria, Marla, how about them Cowboys? Taylor, good morning. Will there be thunderstorms through the day or night? We'll talk about that coming up here in just a little bit. Jennifer Ray... Hills Ray from Horseshoe Lake, welcome to the show. Faulkner, Mississippi, Debbie Davis, thank you very much uh, for checking in for this morning. And Mount Pleasant, Mississippi, Andrea Henderson, thank you very much uh, for stopping by. Let's go ahead and run the numbers and show you what we've got through the rest of the morning. Again, through late this morning, temperatures in the high 50s to the lower to mid 60s. Rain chances in the green area on there. Moving lines showing the winds coming in from out of the southeast going back toward the northwest. And that's going to help to bump those numbers up. Take a look at some of these numbers here by early this afternoon back in the mid to upper 60s for northern Mississippi and southeast Arkansas and for the metro area lower to mid 60s throughout the rest of the mid-south so a very warm day not even anywhere close to freezing at this point in time so we see again the possibility of more showers than anything else right through News Channel 3 at 5 for later on today. Now into tonight, again past about dinner time and through about News Channel 3 at 10, mainly just scattered showers. But looking back to the west, we see the main energy of that storm system passing through north of us. And that could drop a squall line from roughly I-70 in Missouri down through about I-40 into portions of central Arkansas. The main possibility of thunderstorms will be heading directly into the Mid-South by about maybe 3 o'clock tomorrow morning, back into our eastern area Arkansas counties here, and then right into the Mississippi Valley right about the time News Channel 3 daybreak is on the air. The system has slowed down a lot. It was expected to move into the area about midnight tonight. Doesn't seem to be the case at this point in time, but tomorrow morning, about the time you're getting up to watch daybreak, break and about the time a lot of you are going to be getting ready for that early morning commute. Showers, thunderstorms, gusty winds, 
brief heavy rainfall could be a possible problem. Maybe some small hail, but it looks like right now it's still a little too warm, several thousand feet up for anything but rainfall all the way down to the surface. But could be, again, some adverse traveling conditions into early tomorrow for the Mississippi Valley and into the rest of the Mid-South area as we go toward daybreak tomorrow morning. And again, Todd Demers will have more coming up on that. Now, by the time we're done with rush hour, and on the air with News Channel 3 live at 9. Most of the rain should be heading toward the Tennessee River Valley, northeast Mississippi, and passing the Mississippi Valley back to the east. Lingering showers back to the west. Too warm for anything but rainfall out there. Not even a chance of snow anytime soon. And those gusty winds are going to be the main severe weather threat. Lunchtime into early tomorrow afternoon. Mainly temperatures back in the lower to mid-60s, so quite comfortable. And hopefully this rain leaves the area by the time the kids get out of school tomorrow. Rush hour home. The rain is in middle Tennessee and northern parts of Alabama and should not be a problem for us into the rest of the evening. Clearing the area by the time we hit Jim Jagger's forecast tomorrow night on News Channel 3 at 10. Updated forecast from the Storm Prediction Center. This is a different forecast than what we saw last night. Last night it was a very small area of a marginal threat. This morning that has been upgraded to a slight risk category for again much of central Arkansas, southeast Oklahoma, extreme northwestern areas of Louisiana and a pretty good chunk of northeast Texas around Dallas. Now, does this affect the Mid-South area? Kind of, sort of, for right now. We have that marginal threat, a lesser threat for the western counties late tonight into early tomorrow morning, again, into around the areas of eastern Arkansas, and then farther back to the west, a larger threat of severe weather. Think of this like a bullseye, and again, this is where we're seeing the potential for the strongest thunderstorms in this yellow-shaded area. Does it look like we're going to get any more than this, as in stronger, as in higher threat levels? It's possible, but right now, once again, the energy levels in the atmosphere are enough to get the thunderstorms going, keeping them going, or really kicking them up to severe levels, as in massive tornado outbreak. That doesn't appear to be the threat at this time, so that looks pretty good. But the other thing we're going to be watching for later forecasts is for this area to kind of slowly make its way a little closer to us into around very early Monday morning. Possible not entirely likely. Hopefully this stays back to our west, but we will be watching this throughout the rest of the day. Next update from the Storm Prediction Center should be in about two hours, three hours or so, mid to late morning, and then another one by early this afternoon as we keep you updated on this again throughout the rest of the day, so keep it tuned to News Channel 3. Now, into tonight possibility of that, again, kind of swiping the Mid-South area and then going into the southeastern United States from around New Orleans all the way back up to around Atlanta, more of a marginal threat into Monday. But there is still that possibility we could see, again, some stronger storms early tomorrow morning, especially Monday, for parts of the Mid-South area. It looks like mainly west of the metro and south of it is where the main threat will be overnight. And again, the main threat will be damaging winds into the area. So this is going to be something that we could look into for tomorrow morning. Jennifer Hills Ray bonfire last night. That sounds fun. Haven't been to one of those in years. Uh, wonder if we can get away with it this afternoon. Uh, chances of rain out there could be a little bit of a problem out there. I know that there's uh, no active burn bans in Mississippi. There's probably a whole bunch in Arkansas. Uh, not too sure what the conditions are, but check with your fire department out there just to be on the safe side uh, at this point in time. So again, this is where we see the possibility of some more showers out there into the day today. Might be a problem with that bonfire for Jennifer Hills Ray, so please keep that in mind uh, if you're going to be doing anything outdoors. Into Tuesday, threats gone. Not much of anything else to be shown at this point in time, so not much left over there. Very mild today. Showers ramping up throughout the rest of the day. Thunderstorms possible into this afternoon and this evening, mainly west of the News Channel 3 viewing area. And overnight, moving into the Mid-South right around daybreak and rush hour. So we could see some slower conditions out there. It's a good bet Corey Ventura is going to have a lot to talk about tomorrow morning on daybreak when it comes to time saver traffic, so tune in for that. And Todd Demers will have more on your forecast. Showers dwindle throughout the rest of the day, clearing into tomorrow evening. And then by Tuesday, it's cooler, very close to normal with these temperatures, but a lot of sunshine out there, so that'll be kind of balancing things out by just a bit. Close to normal on Wednesday, warmer as we head toward the end of the week, and chances of showers... Maybe a thunderstorm or two, but right now, again, that's kind of up in the air being this far out. It's a little too early to tell. At this point in time, the forecast is more of a suggestion than anything else. 
getting closer to the source, that's where we can kind of narrow things down and come into focus and make things a lot more crystal clear. But the signs are right now cooler weather by the end of next weekend and the possibility of some scattered showers. Yes, it's close to freezing, but I don't think we're going to be seeing anything in the way of snow or ice or Arctic outbreaks anytime soon. But it will definitely be chilly as we head from January into February into the course of the next couple of days. So again, something we can see out there for right now. We'll have updates on that forecast throughout the rest of the day today, so stay tuned for more on that. Thanks to everybody for sending in some really great pictures. Peace Tree UMC. Nice view of some snowfall at Collierville United Methodist Church, looking up at the steeple as the snow came down, so thank you very much for that. Ripple 1026, a very nice aerial shot of Overton Park, a nice view from treetop level, so thank you very much for the view in and around Overton Park as the snow came down, and a nice view from Raising Girls of the Farmstead, a lot of snow out there, and some beautiful early morning, or, or see, snowy afternoon, so early evening sunshine out there, some very picturesque shots around the Mid-South. There is some amazing photography out there, and if you'd like to see more about that, we try to post as much as we can on my social media networks, and all you have to do is just, again, follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, or many other locations out there. Now, Skywarn spotter classes are coming up. What is the this is the National Weather Service teaching you how to spot for severe weather. Maybe you took a class a long time ago. Maybe you've never taken a class. This is a time to get back in the swing of things and to get reacquainted with what's going on with severe weather. These courses teach you how to be a spotter. You look and you listen and you report back what you've got into around the Mid-South area by using, again, one of these really cool things. You can do a very good job of reporting back to the National Weather Service in Memphis what you are witnessing. The upshot of that is that if you see something, say, in Forest City and it's heading up toward around Wynn or West Memphis or something like that, or maybe you're in Germantown and you see something heading toward Collierville, rotating wall cloud, baseball-sized hail, whatever, you call a special number from the National Weather Service, you tell them what you see, they can put that out to the law enforcement authorities, ambulance drivers, hospitals, county emergency operations centers, things like that, and to the press. And that's where I come in and my colleagues here at News Channel 3 with the weather experts. We can tell everybody about what's going on, but more importantly, you seeing that stuff on the ground can help us tell everybody in the path of that storm what you're witnessing and what to prepare for. So your information, volunteers can do a very good job of helping people stay safe and alive. So if you've never taken one of these classes before, I urge you to consider taking one because the more people we have out there watching what goes on, the more we're all going to be safe. Now, you may have come from an area that has never had severe weather before. You may have kids that are afraid of severe weather. I've seen spotters as young as eight or nine years old take these classes if they have a a uh, good handle of science and being able to watch and see what goes on. They last about an hour or so, and they're totally free. They're paid for by your tax dollars. Some concern over the last couple of days with the government shutdown in progress. Is the shutdown going to have any uh, impact on these classes being taught? I haven't heard anything back from Jim Bellis at the National Weather Service in Memphis just yet, but when I know about that, I will let you know. But so far, as far as we know, these classes will be going on as scheduled into the next several weeks. First one at Emmett Till Interpretive Center in Summit, Mississippi, Tuesday, February 13th. One week after that at Cross County Wind Fire Department in Wynn, Arkansas on North Falls Boulevard. Back into Thursday, the 22nd, two days later, Henderson County Emergency Operations Center in Lexington, Tennessee. And on Thursday, March 1st, Gibson County Emergency Operations Center in Trenton, Tennessee. Where's the one for Memphis and Shelby County? Not on the list yet, but we will be passing it along to you when we get it and when we post it again, all this information on there. Also, you can get more details on the forecast by going again with what's going on to WREG.com slash weather. I've seen kids out there that have had some real problems with severe weather. They get very anxious about what goes on. I really highly recommend these classes to be taken because they give kids a little bit more in the way of some control over what feels to be a really uncontrollable and what to a lot of people can feel like a dangerous situation. So if you'd like to take these or recommend them to someone, we'll have more information about these over the next several weeks. It's a great opportunity to learn more about your environment and to help the community out at the same time. So please consider taking these courses out there. More on my forecast on the East Arkansas Broadcast Network Station. So if you can't 
can't watch on the computer or TV, dial us up on the radio throughout the rest of the weekend. And, of course, more with Bob and Josh tomorrow morning, bright and early on AM 730's Talk Back Live. Mainly sports chat, but they got a whole bunch of other stuff going on, so tune in for a lot of great information there. And also on TalkBackLiveNetwork.org. We'll have more information coming up a little bit later today on News Channel 3, starting at about 5 o'clock, depending on how sports go on CBS Sports a little bit later. And, of course, News Channel 3 at 10. We'll have a day's wrap-up of all that, and we'll look into the possibility of severe weather coming up later on tonight. Thanks to everybody for tuning in. Stick around for more with News Channel 3 throughout the rest of the day and into the rest of the weekend.